Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is John Witt, and this is a handstand prep class. So if you've never taken the class before, welcome. If you've taken it before, welcome back. Thanks for checking it out. I hope the classes have been helping you. If you can't do everything, I always think that's not such a bad thing. You know, you're slowly building up to being a better practitioner. I think that's, that's a healthy goal to have. So if there's things that you just want to watch at times or even possibly take notes, that's a great way of learning. So just a couple class announcements. I'm changing my Instagram account and my Facebook account. My Facebook will be John Witt Yoga Movement dot NYC. And my Instagram account will be John Witt Yoga dot Movement. Um, I've been having some technical difficulties with both accounts, so I had to change accounts. So hopefully you can join me on the new accounts just so that you're uploaded or that you're current when I am teaching classes and how you can stay in contact with me um, over the course of the year. So if you ever have any questions, you could always reach out to me. You could direct message me. You could send me a video and that's the easiest way to help develop a practice. So if you've been struggling with something for a long, long time, I would ask someone for help. You know, it doesn't have to be me. It could be someone else. But um, the more you inquire and the more you um, get support, the easier it is to, to develop whatever it may be that you're, you're working on. And um, I always think more minds or more eyes are, are definitely a healthier way of practicing because it can, it can get a little bit difficult doing it on your own. You know, things are good until they're not. You know, a lot of times people are practicing and they're like, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. And then things are not. And you kind of wonder why. But if you videotape yourself or you take photos of yourself, right, you'll kind of see. And it's not always picture perfect form that's going to get you better results. Um, doing anything needs change, needs diversity. So when you're doing things, you got to change them slightly. And then as you keep changing them, you're not going to wear them out. And I'm a, I'm a big believer on that. So how, we're going to need a wall today um, in practicing. So if you can't kick up or something like that, or you can't walk up, it's okay. I'll give you things that you can work on to help build up a better practice. So I'm just going to be with my feet a little bit wider than my shoulders. And, and I do lower body mobility as well, which I think is, you know, you want to be good on your hands if that's your interest, but you really want to have a healthy lower body. So you want to live, you know, you want to be moving and traveling wherever you're at. It's going to come from a healthy lower body. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be moving my knees in and they don't have to move in as much as me, but then I'm moving them back out. So just when it's weight bearing and my legs are moving in, there's tension, you know, and, and in yoga, sometimes we sit in virasana and it's static, right? And it's passive, but even then it should be active. So you want to have good strength in the legs to support the knees and the knees will fall in, especially if you're a very active person and you're playing sports. So as my legs carry in, it's to help in moving my femurs and, and just and, and, and really putting a different kind of stress on the knee. But let's say when you're moving your legs like this, things kind of hurt. You don't have to move as full into a range of motion. But what that tells me is that your tissues aren't moving as well as they can. And when they're, when they're not moving like that, it puts an excessive stress on the joint. And, you know, you might already have pre-existing stuff in your body. I mean, who doesn't? But as you move through a greater range of motion with something like this, your knees can get stronger and healthier. And you really have to change the way that you think, you know, just because you have something wrong with yourself, you can definitely change it. You're just going to have to work through it. And some of it will be uncomfortable. Some of it will be very uncomfortable to develop, but there's a difference between good and bad pain. So I'm just going to have my, um, foot, the front of my foot flat and my heel is up. This is really basic, but when you're getting into lower positions like squatting and crouching, this is really the basic of it, you know, the base of these types of positions. So I'm going to lower the heel and then I'm going to lift the heel and then just kind of see as you're lifting the heel, 
which toe may not necessarily take as much weight. You know, it's a subtle thing, but when you feel that, you can understand how you can make your feet more stronger and more pliable. And that's something that I, I try to do every day. Uh, most days I, I'm, I'm working on my feet and, and as my feet get stronger and healthier, it, it's really helping my knees. It's helping everything above that joint. So I'm gonna lower the right heel. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be circling my leg in space. So as I'm circling, same thing, I'm keeping the foot flat, but I'm moving my thigh around. And then as I'm moving it around, what I would be looking for is uh, subtle motions or you know ranges or angles that it just gets a little sticky or there's like glitches in that it doesn't it doesn't glide as well and that can help in understanding that and then I'm going to move it in I'm not spending a lot of time on this but you could certainly do more of this um, throughout the day these are very very good for your ankles very good for your feet very good for your knees and your hips and then like I said if you had something wrong with your knee or your hip just elevate the heel when you need to lower the heel and lift it up right so same thing i'm just lifting the heel and then i'm going to be rotating in with my right leg and then as my leg is moving in in space as you do it slow you'll kind of see what may not be moving as well right there's many many bones of the foot and they should move eclectically and as they move better right it's going to help with your ankle and it'll certainly help with your knee and it help with your hip so i'm going to rotate out and like i said i could be just lifting the heel and lowering the heel which is is good that's a good starting point but over time it's really nice to let have the leg being able to travel through space so i'm going to bring the foot down so i'm going to do some some squatting right or crouching but it could be a partial range of motion it doesn't have to be a full range of motion so I'm just here where my, I'm up on my toes and then I'm lowering, right? And if your legs are really working here, all the better. Like say you're shaking, right? So good for your joints. But I'm gonna travel, if I can, I'm gonna travel lower. And then as I'm sitting lower, I'm sitting on my heels. I, you don't have to be sitting this low, but you can, right? I'm gonna lift just above my heels, right? And then I'm going to come up a little bit more and a little bit more and then bringing myself all the way back up. So when you move like that, it's, it's more methodical, uh, but you really don't have to use a lot of repetitions if you're moving more like a, like a sloth, right? Um, it's good to move like a sloth at times because it's, it's a little bit more interesting and you'll find greater um, connections and integrations. I'm again, lift up off my heels. I'm gonna lift up a little bit higher and then I'm lifting all the way back up. So just, you know, just some basic squatting, but I'm gonna do more of a rotation. You may need like a, a more like a slippery surface. Like my yoga mat is good because it's sticky, but when I rotate my foot, right, I'm moving my thigh in, if my foot, doesn't move and my knee moves, well, that's how you tear your knee, right? So you wanna be able to move around and, um, you, you could skip this, right? But I'm gonna turn the foot in and I'm sitting on the heel. So it's just a, a, a more basic version, or I guess it's more complex than the last version, but the twisting will help with softening the tissues to, again, give you more mobility. So I'm pressing through the feet, I'm turning through my right foot, and then I'm sitting back down onto my right foot, and I may sit longer. I'm not going to, but when I'm practicing, these are the things that I do. I'm never holding the sides equally. I'm gonna push through the feet, I'm turning, I'm gonna turn to the left, and then I'm sitting down onto the heel, bringing myself up, traveling, lifting the right heel, turning the right thigh in, and then sitting back on the right heel. So, so good for the feet and then lifting yourself up. So say your feet are really, really stiff. Um, as long as it's not hurting you, I think it's a great thing to use. So I'm gonna come down onto my hands and my knees. So when I'm on my hands, I'm gonna be turning the hands out. So with your hands turned out, you're just gonna be moving the weight around a little bit. But push through the hands so that you're, you're building up almost like a, 
a suction cup in the hand so that you're getting stronger in, in the application of the hands. So I'm going to work a little bit more initially just on some, you know, um, from time to time I'll work more on bent arm strength, which I, I really believe it transfers over into straight arm strength. So it's just, it's a good, you know, you want to, you want to be able to travel through these transitions with integration and coordination. And then it carries over into like, I, I really think straight arms is so much easier to develop. So the bent arm will help with the straight arms, right? So come up into where you're on the tops of your feet and just protract the shoulders and lift the knees a little bit off the floor. So this is really basic, right? Super basic, but it's going to be a little bit stronger than say a plank. And then it'll plank will be easier. And eventually, you know, doing some handstand variations will be more accessible to you. And then you can lower the knees and then go back into tucking the toes and sitting back on the heels. So again, this is again, to get you to squat better and sitting lower. So I'm going to untuck the toes and sit back on the feet. And then I'm going to come back where I'm on my hands and I'm going to turn the hands back towards the knees. And as I'm here, I'm just bending my elbows just to add a little bit more stress into the hands. Okay, these are all weighted and that's what will help in creating, you know, assimilation to a handstand. When the hands are turned back, very much like a handstand, right? Or wheel, or, you know, if you call your back bend bridge, you know, they're, you know, when you're in an overhead position. So I'm going to turn the hands forward, push down through the tops of my feet. I'm going to lift my hips up, but this time I'm going to lift up higher, but I'm going to come up and down. So I'm going to go up for a few seconds and then down and then up. And, and when you go in and out of poses, I like that because it, it, you're integrating more. When you hold it for a long time, you may kind of turn off, right? And become more efficient. So I'm being inefficient for on purpose, right? So that I'm getting stronger. So have the hands just out in front of you, bring the shoulders over the hands, lift the hips, right? Move the weight around a bit, then lower the knees, but keep resisting, keep resisting, keep resisting. And pause, push through the hands, lift through the hips, contract through the abdomen, bring the ribs in. Slowly, slowly, slowly bring yourself down. One more time, lift yourself up. Press, 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 press. Bring the weight forward and then bringing yourself down. And then I'm on my knees and I'm gonna reach my right arm behind me more in line with my feet. So I'm just opening up through the chest and through the shoulders, which, you know, if you're doing a lot of yoga, maybe you don't need this as much, but just basic warm up. So then I'm coming up and then I'm going to go to the left side. So my left arm is behind me. I'm just turning through the chest. So rotations will really help with extending and extending transfers over into, you know, being able to do a handstand, having that type of flexibility in the shoulders and then bringing yourself up into an upright position. So I'm gonna do what I had said about in terms of strengthening the arms. So I've done some pike push-ups in this class. I've done some archer push-ups, which are really great. It's a single arm pushing exercise. And I don't believe I've done a diamond push-up, but the diamond push-up's really basic, but it's just a different orientation. So you're just having the hands like so, like in this position, and with, with the hands like this, you actually bring the shoulders more forward past the wrist. So it's quite demanding on the shoulder, but in a good way. Like maybe you're only doing a couple of these and maybe you're only doing an eccentric. I'm going to do an eccentric just so that you have that. But you really want to push and you want to stay active and integrated. And if, if, if you know, you might lose it and that's why you crash, right? So put something underneath you like a pillow or a bolster. And then you you know you don't have to worry about falling right so it's a it's a shorter stance my hands are turned in and with my hands turned in i'm up on my toes just like plank and then i'm slowly 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 coming down and you don't have to get as low as i am but then you can come all the way down right and then you can turn the hands forward and then push back up right so that's that's an eccentric diamond push-up right which it just adds a different element and um, what I was saying earlier about diversity, it'll help. 
but I'm just going to do five of these and I'll do them slow. So slow on the descent is the eccentric and then pushing quite, not super fast, but pushing up into the straight arm position will help give you an idea of how much to push when you're in your straight arms, right? So my hands are turned in, I'm, I'm lifting through my thighs, I'm slowly, slowly, slowly go down, and you don't have to go as low as I am, but then I'm pushing up, and then slow, 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 just above my hands and pushing up, and then slow down, and back up, and then just so I have a few cameras on me. So I'm coming down, slow, 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 back up, and I'll do one more. Um, I, you know, you'll have favorites that you're good at, and those are good, right? And then back up. So when I'm, you know, I never try to, you know, I'm, I'm doing different variations throughout the, the week. But you could switch them up after a month, you know, if that's something that you want to do, you know, stay consistent with one. But with a sun salutation, it's really the same pattern. And that can be, it can be okay for people. It really can. But I've seen a lot of people over the years get really kind of injured from the same repetitive motion. So I think it's good to change it up, you know. So just take like a couple of weeks off and do some different things or something like that. If, say like you were an Ashtanga yoga practitioner, right? just to add a different element of stress on the wrists and the shoulders. So good. And then go back to, you know, your classic way of practicing if that's your way, right? So I'm going to have the hands down. I'm going to come up into a down dog. So I'm lifting up the back. I'm reaching down through the heels. I'm pulling back and just feel what it like. it's like to be in plank. Right? You'll have more strength and hopefully integration to really kind of see you know, how your practice is developing. So slowly, slowly coming down right? and then bringing myself up into a low cobra, really low, and just feel it out. You know, Even if I was doing like a yoga demonstration, I mean, a kind of M you know, in these types of classes, I'm never going to put myself in a position that's obviously going to be unhealthy for myself. And I, you know, for you, I would do the same thing. It's really not worth it. So bring yourself down and bring yourself up. And like I said about um, being uncomfortable, especially with like backbending, you know, it's, it's, for me, it was never really easy. Um, it's still challenging and, and, in a lot of different positions, uh, but that's why I like it and that's why I use it. But it's it you know it's something that you really have to pay close attention as far as how much you are extending. So keep lifting through the collarbone, keep lifting through the upper back, bring yourself forward, bring yourself down, and then curl, curl, curl up into an up upward position. And when the hips are down, it should be less pressure on your back. So you really do need more leverage in the lower body. Get your feet together or get your feet, you know, closer together. They don't have to be together, but that's going to add, like, it almost feels like someone's pulling my hips down the floor. So bring yourself forward and down and then have the hands just underneath the shoulders. So for those of you that can't push up into push up positions, right? Just push into the floor. Just feel the connection of your hands and your shoulders. And maybe you maybe you don't have a connection in one arm, right? Maybe it's just, it's kind of weak, right? It's almost like a, bur a broken circuit, right? So you want to you contract, and that's what's going to help lift you up. So I'm going to lift the front of my body off the floor, just a little bit, right? Then I'm going to push straight up into the top of the push-up. But I'm going to be on the tops of my feet now. So just a little different variation, and then coming down. So let's say you don't want to go up the wall for what I'm going to use next. I'm just going to do a wall walk, just come going up. It's, it's something that I, I really believe in, in terms of building up better conditioning through your handstands. And when you go up, say like it gets really, really difficult for you, just stop there and then walk back out. And maybe that's, that's your, but the next week, say you take the class, 
you know, it gets a little bit easier, you walk a little bit closer. But you want to be in a hollowed position. So if you ever get close enough to the wall where your chest is touching, you're, 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 you're collapsing too much, right? You're too much in extension. So you want to be more in a hollowed position. Like, some, you know, that's why hollow body holes are so popular in the handstand community is because it, it really informs you to keep that. Um, it's not something that I'm going to use today. Maybe I'll use it at the very end of class. But when you walk in, you're transferring the weight from hand to hand, and that's what gets you up. But you want to push, push really strong initially, right? So maybe you can only do a couple, or maybe you can only go in a little bit, but then come out. But I'm just going to do, I'll do three. So I'm going to go up. Um, like I said, if you're really paying close attention and detailed practice, you really don't need a high repetition. As you get stronger, of course, you can do repetitions or sets. And that's where you're really going to get into the 10 second world of a handstand, 20, 30, possibly a minute. You have to have that type of structure. It's very hard to get without it. So you could write it out yourself. I could help write it out for you, right? So bring your hands down and then when you come down, I'm going to protract my shoulders, rounding through my back. So I'm doing a little bit more obvious. Um, it can be just through the shoulders too, right? So I'm walking one foot up the wall and then I'm going to walk back. So left, right, left, back, right? And then grip through the fingertips. So if you're ever at the wall, toes and nose, is a good um, reference point. Then walk it back out. Right. If you have good flexibility, it'll probably be easier to hold and you'll be like, oh, I just want to hold it. But the, you would benefit more in going back and forth. You know, like if, you know, again, I'm being a bit general, but more of a, a female practitioner will probably just want to hold it because they have the flexibility. And for a male, it's going to be really hard to hold like that. But it's, it's something, you know, it's just opposite, right? But I'm going to go back up. I'm going to do a couple more. So one leg is up, then walking back. All right? Push through the hands, the fingertips. Reach through the feet. Try to get your glutes involved. And then that will help in keeping the line better. So walk it back out. Right? And then go back up. Just go straight back up. Go, 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 go. Push through the hands. Right? Pull your head through your arms if you can. Keep the ribs in. And then bring it back out. And then back into a squat if you can. So in squatting, have the feet turned out. Open and close the hands if you need to. And the basic stretch is you can make the right hand into a fist. You can pull the hand back towards your chest. Super basic, right? But I, I say this often, it's, you, you might need your hand as opposed to a wall or a floor, right? Um, some people are more sensitive to the, than others in terms of manipulating the tissues. But like I said, it's a process. And the good thing about the wall is um, you don't have to, sometimes people when they work on just freestanding handstands, not that it's bad, but it gets a little like rigid and, and, and they get too caught up on like just the time of it. Like a time is good, but I think quality of practice is a, is a much healthier approach. Like really getting good practice in where you feel great the next day, you feel great throughout the week, you're progressing. Right? But there'll be bumps. They'll definitely have bumps. So practicing on your own is, I think, a, a better way. Right? Walk the hands forward. Come up into a down dog. And pull, pull back through the hips. So pulling back, pushing through the hands. Right? Come forward and through into an up dog. Lift the chest. I'm on the toes. You could certainly be on the tops of your feet. So if you're on the tops of the feet, just, you know, it's more like Cobra. Then going back up into a down dog, pull it back, and then walk it forward 
And as you walk it forward, just walk your hands back to your feet. Be over to the right side and purposely round your back if you can. So round through the upper back. Like get, you know, get into your back where you're in flexion and that'll help with your extension. Take the hands over to the left side and the same thing applies. So round the spine. So I don't feel this at all in my lower back. I feel it all through my upper back, right? And then bring it back into the middle. Now take your hands up off the floor and round, 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 round. Keep it rounded and slowly, slowly bringing yourself back up. You know, just a more classical way. And then more people are, these days are using more like weighted stretching. And if you have good flexibility, use a really light weight. You know, use like a two pounds, four pounds, and you could do that motion slow. It was so good for the spine, but that'll, that'll help with obviously being in a forward bend, which is essentially going to help with handstanding. You know, if you're, if you're here with your flexibility and you can't get your hands out, it's, it's, you know, it's more difficult to kick up. It's more difficult to press up, right? But I'm just going to do a basic side bend. I'm leaning to the right side, you know, to the left, you know, as I'm going to the right. And say this is more basic than what your experience is. Um, basic and really kind of subtle practice is, is going to only make your advanced practices better. So you can kind of see like if you're creating bad habits, right? Bringing yourself up and then side bending to the left and going to the right. So there's days that are really push the envelope in terms of my own personal practice. And every day I'm doing more and more things that are, which I'll be doing at a really advanced age. I know that I'll be doing these things, but in doing the more basic things, the idea is that I'll be able to do more advanced things at an older age as well. Like I'll still be able to do, you know, just basic um, squats and pressing and, you know, just being able. So I'm going to go back into doing some stuff for your lower body just to give you some variety. I'm going to be stepping my left foot behind my right and then sitting back on my back foot. So these are all Eastern stances, more martial arts type of movements, but they're really, really good in moving the body. And I've said this before, I don't foam roll. Not that you shouldn't, but I move my body in a lot of different ranges. I don't necessarily need to be rolling my body out or massaging it. I mean, if someone gave me a massage or wanted to give me a massage, of course I'd be up for it, but I wouldn't, you know, I don't, I don't really need that stuff. Um, thank goodness I'm not, I'm never really feeling like I need PT. Again, not that that's bad. You know, if you need PT, definitely use it. If you have insurance, definitely use it. So sit yourself back up, go back into the left. So I'm stepping the left foot back and it's like wringing your legs out, literally like twisting the tissues, which is so good for your knees, right? But it's nice to be able to sit in these lower positions because you don't always have a chair. Um, and, you know, I, I, it's good to have a lawn chair, right? <laughs> it was probably the worst thing for your back. You know, get on the ground, especially because it's nice out now you know, get more on the ground, spend more time on the floor, lift yourself up, go over to the right side. So again, I'm, I'm spending more time in these lower positions and that's really what's helping to restore the tissues. So it's extra weight, you know, and some yoga systems are using like weighted uh, uh, stretching, which is great, but you don't always have that. Um, so you can use your own body weight. So I'm sitting back on the back foot, the right foot, and these are like, when you look at one classic pose, there are many, many different poses, right? So you can kind of see that. So I'm bringing myself back up. So when I'm up, I'm gonna go back into another handstand exercise. Um, I'm gonna practice kicking up. But with kick ups, you know, it's a really about finding the rhythm. But let's say you can't kick up. A lot of it is getting your shoulder, getting the weight into your hands is, is critical. So when you're, when you're kicking out, I'd say there's not a lot of weight in your hands. Well, that means that you just got to travel that much further forward with the shoulder to get your hips up and to get your leg up. Um, but I'm going to practice just a, a few 
lifting the leg and lowering the leg because maybe that's what you need. But essentially what we're going to do is we're going to kick up, right? So when I'm here, again, I'm protracting the shoulders. I'm lifting it up. But just practice lifting the leg and lowering the leg. Lifting and lowering. Right? Just get some little hops. Right? And then say you get a little bit of air, right? You know, just bring it down. But you're getting close. It's very hard to hold the L position, the 90 degree angle with one leg. So the, if you're close to getting up, just go up with your legs. The, the, not that it has to be fast, but that line's actually easier to keep than a 90 degree angle. So I'm just gonna go over to the other side just to get your legs moving. But I'm lifting and I'm lowering. Lifting and lowering. So maybe it's just a little bit off the ground, right? But I'm pushing through the hands, right? And as I'm pushing and I'm, I'm resisting, that's what makes it safe for the wrist. It's so good for the hands, it's so good for the wrists. So when someone says, oh, no, 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 I can't do push-ups, or no, 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 I can't, I can't do a handstand. It's the reason you should be doing it, is because you can. And, and, and the more manipulation you get in your hands, your arms, the healthier it is for you, because you got to learn how to use your hands again. So, it, I mean, some people, of course, you know, can't do this. But I think for the majority, you know, I think the majority can. It's just, it's, you know, I'm, I'm old or I have this injury and work at it. So I'm going to go to the wall and I'm going to practice kicking up. So if you're wanting to get stronger, say you can kick up, practice coming down slow, whether it's two legs, two legs are really difficult to do, whether they're bent or straight, just do one leg. And then that gets easier and easier. And if you take a capoeira class, they, 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 I mean, the repetition that they do in that martial art form, which is a great art form, I mean, they're doing a lot. I mean, it's, it, you know, so if you do get into that, slowly build it up, right, like anything. So I'm going to bring my hands forward. My hands are turned out. I'm going to take my right leg up, slowly bringing it down, kicking it up, slowly, slowly bringing it down, bringing it up. Slow, 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 bring it down. And then coming down, just squatting, right? Again, you could be crouching, you could be doing a lot of different things, you could be opening, closing the hands. So if you do need some stretching in between for your hands, definitely do it. Um, say you're done, but you do need more conditioning, do plank as I'm doing this, you know? Find a variation of plank, side plank, all these things will help build up into practice. But I'm gonna do the left side. Um, but at some point, if you do your non-dominant leg or your favorite leg and kicking up, it'll get so balanced that you don't necessarily know which one's the good or bad leg. And that's a good thing to develop. So push through the hands, right? Protract through the shoulders. Swing your left leg up. Bring it down. Swing it up. Bring it down. So when I'm, when I'm swinging it, I'm really trying to lift it more. So it's, it's, you know, it's not viewed as a stretch, but I'm really trying to extend it up more. And that's partially why it's easier to lift. So you gotta, you gotta give it some, you gotta give it some effort, right? To get it up, especially if you're not quite there yet. So I'm going to come back into plank and then just see the difference. See the difference from your pushing. Should be a lot easier. Then come back down on the knees, sit back on the heels, right? Just to give you some variety and just different coordination is I'm going to be lifting my knees off the floor and then slowly lowering my knees and lifting again. Really good with blocks, you know? The further my hands are forward, the easier it is, All right? So it's, it's good. This is a great thing for your toes. So good for your feet. But then as it gets easier, move the hands back more. And like I said, that'll help with you getting into 
some deeper positions. So come back into a forward bend, and in a forward bend, roll, 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 roll yourself up, back into standing. I'm just gonna do a little bit more spinal manipulation. So um, again, I, I, I really believe most people aren't flexing their spine nearly enough. Even if you're a classic yogi and you're doing classic sequencing at the very end, um, I just don't think it's enough. I mean, because it's, if you're just doing one dedicated practice, that's usually in the morning, right? But there's a whole lot of day left over. So I'm just basically rounding my spine here in an upright position. You'll never ever see a yoga ad like this, right? It's like, it's like so frowned upon. It's so good for your back. So let your arms relax, let your head relax, push through your feet, bend your knees if you need to. Just do it a little different than you typically do it because you may think you're right, but you might not, right? So it's so good to just do it a little bit differently. So bringing yourself back up. I'm gonna go back into a rounded position, rounding my chest, flexing, right? letting my arms relax. Letting my head go, slowly bringing myself up. This time I'm going to extend, but I'm not extending from my head, I'm just extending from my thoracic. Early getting that lift can make a difference, right? Um, I'm just going to do a little bit more flexion, but in an upright position, but onto the side. So just going over to the right side, rounding. It could be more, right? But I'm this is an angle that most people aren't doing, especially a yoga practitioner. They're so great at flexing at their hips that you want to be able to flex from your spine, then bringing it up. And then I'm going to be on an angle when I'm back bending. It's a slight angle, right? Because when you get into like advanced transitions and back bending, it's a lot of twisting, which is very good for your back. So come into an angle towards the left foot. Let the shoulders relax down. It's so simple. This is such a simple thing. But in moving your spine like this, it's going to make it stronger. And if you don't move it like this, right, it's going to get weaker. And that's a big reason why I think it becomes so um, calcified and weak. And bringing yourself up and extending. Push through your feet. And not that you have to lift like your life depends on it, but get a bigger lift. And then that'll help in, you know, creating um, more space, global space, and then bringing yourself back up into neutral. So I'm going to take my feet out in a wide position, and I'm just going to go back into bringing the knees in a little bit, right, and bringing them out and traveling, traveling, and knowing when to stop is such a great marker of maturity in terms of practice. So um, it's good to know your, your capacity. So good to know like what not to do, and that's how you can keep advancing, right? But if you're like, ah, oh, just some, someone else is doing it, you know, be honest enough and mature enough to not do certain things. But then over time, you, you know, you'll be able to do radical things if that's what you desire to do. I'm gonna take my legs out wide and with my legs out wide, I'm just gonna be traveling through a wider position with my legs. So creating some more space in my hips. And then as I'm moving around, right, I'm, I may find an angle that I actually need more of. So it goes way beyond alignment. Alignment is really good to start with, but then over time to advance, you're actually gonna be taking your body out of alignment. So when my foot's turned in, it's more adductor, right? And it's, it's, I'm, I have effort to support me. I'm never just hanging out with all of my weight because I could potentially, you know, tear something or worse. So I'm going over to the left side. As I go to the left, I'm pushing, pushing my thighs apart, right? getting more and more upright. Right? It's okay if you're pitching forward. It's okay if your heel is lifting. 
It's actually way more difficult with the heel up. You want stronger legs? Have your heel up. Right? You really want stronger legs? That's such a great way. So I'm gonna to go to the left, right? Lifting that heel. So when my heel is up, it's like no different than, you know, you going up. This is something I like to do is go upstairs incredibly slow. Like taking like two minutes to go up a, you know, a very short amount of stairs, but really wide and it's such a good way for your legs. So I'm going over to the right, but now I'm gonna, I will go lower, but I'm pushing out, right? And I've said this before in other classes, I could care less if I'm getting lower. You know, I wanna get lower, right? It's nice to get lower, but I'm not gonna force myself just to get lower. You know, if you really want it, make the video, take the photo, but then you don't ever have to do it again because you could actually be damaging yourself. But I'm gonna turn my foot up just to add a different angle, and this is more into my hips. And then as it gets more developed, you the floor will get in your way in terms of range. So there's really creative ways that you, and the great thing is that there's so much um, inspiration out there. So if it's not me, find other forms of inspiration in terms of developing better practice. So push to the right foot, lean to the left, as you lean to the left, right, get into the inner thighs, push the legs apart, keep yourself upright, and then you can turn the foot up. And like I you know, when I do something like this, I could certainly count the repetitions, but I really like using just time. And say, I'd say, I'm gonna do this for three minutes, or I'm gonna do it for five minutes. At any time I'm done with it, I'm done with it. And that, and you don't have to be like, rigid of like, oh, I gotta get to five minutes, or I gotta get to 10 minutes. Same thing applies with meditation. And it just, it's, you know, it's not to say that you should always take the easy road out, but maybe that's all you need on a day, because you never really know when you get into it. But when I go into the left, because I forgot about it, I'm gonna turn the right foot up, and I may sit a little bit more into my hips, right? Which is, you know, like I've said before, these are all very, similar classic positions in the yoga world in terms of like Maria Chasana pose. I'm gonna push through the left foot and I'm bringing myself back up. But I'm gonna take my legs out wide and just to test and taking my legs out and something like this you could hold for 20, 30 seconds, but you could do sets of these to get the legs out, you know, further. Um, side splits typically more difficult than uh, Hanumanasana front splits. So take a few breaths, you can take the arms out wide, you can move the tailbone down, get yourself nice and upright. And there's ways to travel through this, you know, which are really great too, it's just more progressive. So I'm gonna bring my hands in, and then bringing my feet in, and I'm gonna test out my squat, just so you can kind of see. It's good to turn the feet out, they could be completely turned out. And so when someone says it's wrong or incorrect, Test it out yourself. Do your own research and you'll see if it's actually true. But if you've got back pain, keep your heels up. I'd be more in a crouch position. Probably better for your back. I'm gonna do one more set of the um, diamond push-ups. And again, if it's if it's the it's too difficult, right? Hold plank, do the eccentrics, those are the regressions of of that ex of this exercise but like i said if it's the most difficult thing for you it's great and the trick is is you'll be like oh this is so amazing and you'll want to do it again tomorrow but that's the last thing you should do like don't get caught up in like i gotta keep my yoga the same or i gotta keep my weight training the same because it's 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 a trap right it's it's even though it's so good and and i'm i'm you know, the reason I know this is because I'm, I've had the same experiences. Like I'll rock climb a certain way. I'd be like, oh, I gotta do that tomorrow. I don't, I'll do something completely different. Like I'll, I'll do more of my yoga the next day or whatever it may be, All right? So come onto your hands. Again, the hands are turned in and it's to really bring the shoulder more forward past the wrist. So if, it, if it's too much to push up, just do the eccentric. So I'll do five again. So I'm down, having the hands turned in. And then as I'm lifting myself, I'm protracting 
right? There's a strong contraction in the shoulders. Then I'm coming forward, coming forward, coming forward, but I'm trying to get my abdomen involved. Come down, but then if you can, push up. Go straight up, use your fingertips. Slow, 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 slow. You could use absolutely no strength to get down, but you want it. You really want it to be difficult, then push up. Slow, 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 slow. Push back up. Coming back down, nice and slow. Slow, back up. And this will be the last one. So coming down, forward, forward, forward. Back up and then down. Have the hands turned back towards the knees. And with the hands turned, just one hand actually. Just move the weight around. Kind of see what angles you actually need. Right? Then I'm going to bend the elbow, right? But I'm going to come forward. So I'm coming down. Heel the hands up. Just going to do a couple of these. So back down. And then back up. Right? So turn the left hand back. So it's in external rotation. And then I'm coming forward with my head. My thumb is off the floor. Down, back up. And like I said, if I feel one hand needs more work, I'm gonna do more work on that hand. Typically it's my left hand that needs more work, but interesting, my right hand needs a little bit more stretching. So that's what I would do after class, right? So I'm gonna come down and then back up. So come forward with your knees, have your knees wide, sit back. Right, just be upright. So, like I said about sitting on the floor more often, you could pick two, three poses, ten poses. This is a great exercise to do is for five, ten minutes. Is just move around in them. Stay for ten seconds. Stay for twenty seconds. Stay for a minute or more if you want to. Longer isn't always better. I wish it was because I would just say hold the pose for a minute or two. But if it's really difficult. Even if you're in it for five, 10 seconds, it will help. And then you just keep doing it. And then a soft surface is probably gonna be better for most people. And then a harder surface as you develop, like with Nomad, is something that you could do as well, right? I'm gonna take my right arm behind me, and then as I'm taking my right arm back behind me, I'm gonna to go to my right elbow, right? Just really passive. And with passive stretching, it'll help with like being more dynamic. Right. They, they, they go hand in hand. So when I'm really warm, you know, I'm not necessarily going to do more um, strength work or dynamic work. You know, just I'll, I'll use passive stretching if, if I need it on that day. So I'm going to bring myself up and then I'm going to go to my left side as I go to my left. You know, maybe you're not going to the elbow, but you can. And then that's just going to help add more twisting into the upper back and it's you know I don't feel this at all in my lower back if I did I certainly wouldn't be going back like this you know and, and you the same you don't have to do that right and then bringing yourself up and stretching your legs forward and with your legs forward have your hands beside you and just retract the shoulders so get the shoulders to retract but then point through the feet, scrunch up the toes, and then just fan them out. Scrunch up the toes, fan them out, scrunch them up, and then fan them out. Just one time, I'm gonna push down through the feet, I'm gonna lift the hips off the floor, just moving the weight around. You know, there's very good ways to help develop the shoulders here. There's very good ways to help develop your feet. Um, I'm just using it as a, you know, more of like a cool down as you will, or closing sequence. And then you can bring your hips down and then you can just come into a seated position. So if I had time to rest like you, I definitely take the time to rest. But throughout the week, when you have the energy to practice strong, practice strong, right? And when you don't have the energy to practice, you know, do more breath work, do meditation, right? These are the things that I would be using when I'm sick, um, but when I have, you know, the energy to do more practice, even though I, you know, practice quite extensively yesterday morning, I had time in the afternoon, 
So I, you know, did another strong practice, just felt right to do. But I don't always do that. You know, I just base it off of what I really need. Um, but I hope the classes have been helping. Like I said before, I'm changing my Facebook account and my Instagram account. So my Facebook account, my new account will be John Witt Yoga dot movement dot nyc that's long and then my ig account will be john Witt yoga dot movement and i'll be changing those probably in a few weeks um, i wish i didn't have to but i've been having some te technical difficulties so that's why i'm doing it but um i hope the class has been helping you uh if you want to take other classes with me you can check out my website john yoga.com you can learn more about me uh, if you want to help me, you could share my information with people you think that could benefit from my style of teaching, my information. Um, but I, I, you know, uh, I love all the support. I really appreciate it. And hopefully I'll, I'll see you soon in class. Have a wonderful weekend and um, take care of yourselves. Be well. Get outside. All right.